I'm Matt, that's Erica, and our daughter Shanti. We are a family that lives full time in our school bus that we converted ourselves. And after six months of the conversion, we have moved in and now we're ready to show you guys our home. Hi, welcome to our kitchen. This is one of my favorite spots for so many reasons. Um, originally, we had no idea what was going to go here. It was going to be a sit down desk with some leg room. Then it was going to be like a, a puppy thing. And Matt came up with the idea to have a standing desk, which I love. Um, I do a lot of computer work because we work uh, remotely. So I'm able to perch up in front of the window and just work away. We've got four not junk drawers. They're all junk drawers. Right here. And um, this is super spectacular. My brother, Ben, does cabinetry work, and it was his idea to have a hanging shelf with some extra live edge we had, uh, which I thought it turned out gorgeous. The last bus, we had workout weights and bands, but they were hidden, so I had to like lift up the... It, I never did it, because it was too hard to get to. So this time, we made the one and only large drawer our workout drawer. So super excited about that. I need your guys' input. I left this totally raw because this is a paint project for me someday. So in our next tour, you're going to see what I do here, but um, this is going to be fun. That's what that is. Uh, if you look down here, there's a little vent. The vent down here is our diesel heater, which is a lifesaver for me. My family never gets cold. I wear hoodies <laughs> in the summer. <laughs> so anyways, we've got um, a diesel heater down there. Yes, my friends, we have a DeWalt battery operated shop vac for our <laughs> broom vacuum. The only thing this doesn't do is mop, but I will say it's a lifesaver with a toddler and a dog and a dust-filled route because we can clean up really quickly with this beast for sure. Down with the vent, uh, this is the diesel heater controller, which is really nice. Just a couple buttons, you get what you want. I feel like a lot of schoolie and van lifers have this, and there's a reason. It's really cool to see things. So we change it weekly. This is our this week message, <laughs> you can see. Confession. I love plants. That's not the confession. The confession is some are real, some are not. Uh, it's hard to keep them all alive. <laughs> and so I have um, probably 80%, that's a lie. I have 50% real, 50% fake, but it makes the bus happy. So it makes me happy. Uh, what I'm touching here is our live edge and it's gorgeous. We've got a bunch of cedar around. When we were building out this bus, the smell was incredible. Just raw cedar wood everywhere. It was really cool. We have floating shelves. To be honest, because we just moved in, they're not permanently occupied. We just threw some things up there to you know, have things up there. This is my pride and joy. We don't have to put this in there, but if we do, uh, I maxed it out. It's full. Every page I had to get a new one because before I met Matt, I was an international backpacker. And I had so many stamps in my passport that I had to get a new one. Continuing on with the kitchen area, this is another part of our floating shelf system. And this time we went with pop. <laughs> Pocker. <laughs> we, went with, we went with copper uh, to hold everything in, and I love it because last time in our old bus, we just had the copper sink, and that was the only piece of copper in the whole bus. But now it's pulling in, and, and it's, um, I think it's gorgeous. All the copper that we chose to have, like, organically unfolded because we started with the sink, and then we thought the copper pipe would be really cool. Then we found this backsplash, which is spectacular. And then we realized how well the backsplash blends with the cedar live edge. And so it kind of just started spiraling into this really cool design that we really had no idea that we were going to do so much copper. But we did, and we love it. One thing you'll notice during this tour is all of the drawers. You guys, we have 41 drawers in this school bus. I can honestly say I think that's more than I've ever had in any home or any apartment or anything I've ever had. Um, and we love it, though, because some of them are still empty, which... Makes me really happy. Um, we've got, you know, your utensils and plates and cups and all that. We have a pull-out trash, which is fantastic. Because we had all of this space, I didn't, I guess we didn't really want to have just two huge things open. So we, we have this little guy that holds some of our larger, um, what are those things called that you use all the time? Appliances? Yeah, you guys get it. Anyways, but then... Uh, we have this, which is a pull-out drawer that has like the cleaning supplies or bags, just stuff that we don't want to put necessarily with food or anything like that. Um, this separation made it for under the sink. We have um, some a nice little storage hack for you out there. Both of these items, our fridge and our stove oven, are um, they are bigger than in our last bus, and we chose that with purpose. Um, not that the other ones were too small, but... 
you know, I don't think I have a good reason. I just wanted something bigger because we cook every day. So it's a three burner stove, full oven. And then this, it's so cheesy, but you know, you're adulting when you're excited about two drawers that are underneath your oven that hold like, you know, pots and pans and all that. Uh, I was pretty stoked. Uh, we have a 10 cubic fridge, freezer, fridge. So because we did a roof raise, we have tons of ceiling room and that's why we chose to lift up the fridge. We didn't have to kneel down to look inside. Completely happy with the size. The fridge is more than enough. Here's six of our 41 drawers. <laughs> but again, with you know, we've got toddler snacks, mama snacks, you know, baggies and everything on down. This is, um, this is a hack I feel like is becoming more common, but it's such a space saver. It would be a shame to have any of this space go to waste. So we just have our miscellaneous stuff up there. Again, you guys can see this, but I can't even touch our ceiling. So I get my little step stool out to check what's up there. <laughs> I almost feel like Matt should do this section because we've been married for five years now and we've had the other bus for two years and he has been asking for this little machine for so long, we finally have it. This is our coffee section. So he's got his espresso, all of his mixes. And uh, this is this is our morning happy place. This is where we start every day. This live edge piece was sitting in a shed. We were almost done with the build and we didn't know what we were going to do with this wall. And Matt came up with the idea to use some of the live edge as like an art work, some art, um, blah, 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 blah. the live edge is like an art piece. There are a lot of pros and cons for having such a big bus like this. So this is a 40 foot long flat nose pusher motor in it. And uh, the biggest pro is the comfort of living inside the space. You know, there's a lot, we, we're totally comfortable as a family of three living inside of the space and even a bigger family mm -hmm. would be comfortable in it. The biggest con though about having a bus this big is that it is a big, bus driving down the road <laughs> trying to navigate places pulling into gas stations is kind of tough as well i mean driving it is is easy it just feels like we're driving like a big u-haul truck any of you have ever done that before and it's actually probably even easier um and it's just like the other day we were trying to get some water somewhere and we found a spigot but to get in there would have been just a very hard U-turn to do. Plus we're towing our Jeep, so when you're flat towing, you can't reverse at all. You can only go straight. If you have to reverse to do like a three-point turn, you gotta take off the Jeep. It's there's There's been times we, we, you know, we're on the highway or a back road and I'm like, look at that farmer's market. We probably should have stopped too late now, but you know, yeah. you have to really consider, do we really wanna stop and turn this beast around? And sometimes the answer is no. It's just not convenient enough or... Most of the time the answer is It is, is no. and that's unfortunate because living this lifestyle, those are things we look forward to. Finding those random, yeah. you know, hole in the walls or local shops. And if we don't know about it ahead of time, chances are we're not going to stop. And that's, that's probably one of my biggest cons, I guess. Personally, although I love that we're all really close together, you know, physically, all of that inside the bus, Erica, me, I actually like my own space as well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I, I just value both. And so living in this larger space, you know, she can be up in her bed reading a book. You know, he can be back in the office working. And I still have my space, you know, up in the front if I want to read or write or cook. Um, I, I, I don't feel suffocated at all. And I think that's probably the biggest pro for me. Um, although we spend a lot of time outside of the bus, we live out of the bus, that when we're in, let's say it's a rainy day, um, I don't think we're on top of each other. You know, we have our space and that's something I really appreciate. So hey guys, welcome to our living room. This is an awesome area. We had a lot of revisions during this. And our last bus, which we learned a lot from, it was an amazing bus, but now this one, we kind of took what we wish we would have had in the last bus and put it in this one, which, happens to be in our roof raise, the way that our living space is set up, the L-shaped kitchen. We really wanted to be able to accommodate people better. In our last bus, we had a galley style. So we had a couch on one side and no sitting area on the other. So whenever you sat on the couch, you just could go like this, but we really wanted to make it a community kind of space. And this table has a lot of 
uh, versatility to it. So right now it's set up in the dining room mode. We can take this leg off. It will go down into an extended bench. So even more people can sit here or someone could sleep here. And then the table also swivels around to be here in the middle so we can have a community dining area or a game table. It works out really good. We have two nice bench seats. Underneath this one is our shoe storage. So we have a bunch of shoes and we also, the diesel heater vent that Erica was talking about there also comes out on this side. So there's one diesel heater here in the front, also one in the back. This front one feeds heat to the kitchen and also feeds heat up here to the living space. So it's nice and even heat coming out. And then on this side is more camping, utility kind of stuff, quick grab, chairs, camping hammocks, you know, that kind of thing. We have some uh, upper cabinets in the back of the bus, but we really want it the front to feel super open. And it does, it feels really big in here. We don't even have enough stuff, which is an amazing thing to, to fill this rack. We just have some cool decor over here. I love to play guitar, I play it a lot. And because it's out here in the open, I just pick it up and I just play it all the time. But the only thing is I need to figure out how to keep it secured to the wall because when I'm driving it goes the whole time. <laughs> so I don't know, Some, if you guys have a good idea for that, let me know, I haven't really thought of anything yet. And uh, we'll get over here in a second, but I wanna show you this couch. This is a very popular style couch for schoolies. It pulls out into a bed, which is super functional. It lifts up to have storage, but on this side, this L-shaped couch, um, which is super comfortable. There's a lot of different ways to lay here. Underneath here is our solar setup. So once all the cushions are removed, right here is the whole brains of our electrical system. This system is a really incredible system and has not let us down yet. We have two mini splits in the bus, one here in the front, one also in the back. They both completely run off of our solar system. Next Tuesday, so a week from now, we're gonna be posting a full walkthrough of our solar system, all the components, how it was built, the efficiency and the cost. And to give a little bit away on that, we spent $6,000 total on this whole entire electrical system when most people are spending around 10 to 12. But we have 2,800 watts of solar on the roof, 7,600 watt hours of battery storage, our Multi Plus, which is an inverter and a charger. This is all nerdy kind of stuff, but if you're interested in it, just come back next week because I'm gonna have a full video on it. And this system is, is super nice. It's never let us down. And so now up here in the very front of the bus, the cockpit area, this is probably the space that we have done the least work on. We're like 95% done with the build. So like you can see right here, is totally unfinished. We got this big part of the ceiling done, which was a challenge, but uh, this part right here, we still need to build some kind of thing. If any of you guys have any good ideas, just let us know in the comments, as well as this side over here. Um, um, and right up here is our mini split for the front area. This is a Pioneer 1200 BTU mini split. So it does AC and heat, it also has a heat pump. So. It's actually kind of nice to have a lot of different ways of heating and cooling, which really the only ways you have cooling is our mini splits, but heating, we can use the diesel heaters when it's really cold, or we can use the heat pump on this when it's just kind of cold, because this does not pump out as much heat as the diesel heaters, and the diesel heater, heaters use way less electricity, but also uses diesel fuel. So it's a payoff, but if it's in like the 40s high, like or 50s, we can run these throughout the, even, throughout the night and it keeps us nice and warm, especially back in the bedroom. We made these little pockets up here just for some more decor items. And then Erica's car garden is right up here. So Erica has a lot of fun and I, I love it too. It's, it's definitely her baby child with the rest of the plants, but it's super nice to look at when I'm driving. It doesn't cover any of my view and it just, it's a really nice vibe, especially when you walk up. And with these hanging ones here as well, you know, it's just, it's just really pretty up here with all the greenery and throughout the whole bus, there's a ton of greenery and with the green and the coppers and the blues, I just love how the natural vibe of our bus feels. It just has a really earthy feel to it. Even on the outside, the coloring on the outside. And in honor of the OG, their Happy Trails bus, we have a picture of it right here with our little tracker 
and we miss both of these things. Rhonda, I hope you see this video. We hope the bus is treating you well. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just an incredible start to our journey. And so guys, here is, this is, was the most, like the one project that took the most amount of time, actually other than doing the roof raise itself, was this ceiling here. I was, uh, the backstory on the ceiling is I was laying in bed at night and I was kind of doing a little meditation and I was just like, my mind was super quiet. And then all of a sudden this vision of this herringbone pattern going down the center of our ceiling just like came into my head and uh, it, it was really made the ceiling of the bus super unique. Our last bus was really nice and it was incredible. It had a lot of creative ideas, like the shower was in the stairwell, Shanti's bed was underneath ours and the offices were in the back all in the same space, so a lot of different areas in a small space. But it wasn't as functional as this bus. We went with a normal kind of shower, although it's still beautiful, it's just a, a normal shower because it's it's just nice. The, stair, the shower on the stairwell before worked, you could shower off, but it was kind of inconvenient. You had to set it up, you know, it was, had more inconveniences to it. So the nice thing about this build is that everything is designed really well from Eric and I. We really like the design that we picked out. It's very functional for our family and easy. There's not a lot of stuff to set up to use. Yeah, that was big. In fact, when we were designing it, my, my thoughts constantly went to, can this travel as is? You yeah. know, am I going to have to take this down, hook it up, latch it up, lock it up, or can we just start the bus and go? And there is a huge difference in yeah. timing. Like if Matt's like, hey, I'm, we're going to go in 10 minutes. One minute later, I can be ready to go versus the last bus. We get up early to, you know, do our checklist of what we have to do before we take off. From living on the road before, <laughs> we learned more of what our priorities were while we're yeah. on the road. So like with Erica's workout stuff it's convenient to get to rather than in our last bus it was hidden and you actually had to like pull it out and set it all up and by the time it's like that's like the hardest part is just starting something but once it started it's okay but if it's easier to start it'll get done more even Shanti's toys I don't even think she knew she had half the toys she did because we had no space just to have it out what a luxury that she can go into her little room right now and pull down a book and get a doll or find her trucks or whatever it's yeah 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 it's valuable <laughs> yeah she had her own space in the last bus but it was more like a cubby space and we made this one for her to grow into she's only three now but she could be eight and still be in that same space right down to my bedroom okay show me this is my a toy place well all the toys is and this is a surprise for me. And it showed the camera. And this is my drawing case. And this is my new bed up on the top. This is my paintbrush. I can draw my on my wall. Shanti! This is my aerial place. This is my aerial. And this is my writing. This is my ladder. And this is my handle. And this is my gold in the dike. And this rainbow. And this is my colada. And this is my dolphin. This is my dolphin. And this is my knee mouse. I love my bed. This is a map where we can only go where we can go. That's awesome. This is how I can get down and I can play with anything. That's how I can do it. Say hi, Shanti. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah, her bed is right across from the bathroom and this is still uh, in progress, and I'm sincerely asking for some help with this because I love to paint, I love to design, 
And you can see I have this huge blank canvas. Matt made this door by hand. Uh, I believe it was two by fours and he spliced it down and then put each one of these slats in between. It's gorgeous. So I want to leave this natural, but I've got all of this white wall. It, uh, help, <laughs> what do I do? Do I do a mural, funky lines, a different color? It's white for a reason and I cannot wait to show you what I end up doing with it. So um, another cool part about this door is that we are going to do the barn sliding, couldn't figure it out, maybe a curtain. And then it dawned on me that this can dub as a bedroom door. So our bed is here, Shanti is here. If we have guests staying in the living room or vice versa, this opens, completely closes off, and now we have a bedroom door for privacy, um, for whatever reasons, you know, or whatever it might be. Up top, some handmade custom cabinetry work by my brother Ben in Oklahoma. We were so lucky to get an abundance of cedar live edge. When I say abundance, I mean we had so much at the end of the build, we're like, where can we put this slab? And we decided to put some in the bathroom, and it's gorgeous. It kind of takes away from that stark bathroom feel and kind of lightens it. I actually think it looks like an outdoor shower, even though it's not. We went with the composting toilet, just like on our last bus. Uh, I could get into full detail about it, but it is a five gallon bucket with a urine diverter. So solids go in the back, liquids go in the front. Matt installed a fan system in there. So it just takes out any smell or scent and just puts it outside. So it never smells like we're talking during or post. Nobody knows. It's completely scentless. This is our indoor outdoor shower. <laughs> Matt, how did you make this? These cedar planks? These were actually cedar one by sixes that I also took to a table saw and kind of milled them down to have these little slats in them. So it gave us a cedar shake look and the water just falls right down. It's super simple, but I'll let Erica finish this up because she's a lot prettier than me. This shower head is fabulous. When, because it's removable. But this little uh, knob here in the middle, you can do like half pressure, full pressure, totally off, kind of like military style, soap up, you know, turn on, that kind of deal. So it saves us water. Uh, guess what? More live edge. <laughs> it's, it's a floating shelf in here to, to house all of our um, soaps and, and whatnot. I saw this idea in another schoolie and I thought it was brilliant. They didn't have any children, which made it even more special to us. What we have here is our emergency exit. It is so secure. Uh, that's never happened, folks. <laughs> Here was the thought behind this. We're always out in dirt and mud and lakes and rivers and to get a dirty dog and a messy toddler through the bus into the shower to rinse them off is a nightmare. We literally open up the door, plop them right in the shower, done, rinse them off. And then also when we're on gorgeous land like this, we just open this up and then all of a sudden we have an outdoor shower. As long as we don't have neighbors. Well, even if we do. Depends if we're trying to make a little extra cash that day. <laughs> so I was a little skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. I was skeptical of having all wood in our shower, but behind this is plastic. So it's all sealed off. And then we um, sealed it with some, like an oil-based polyurethane. So we have taken numerous amount of showers in here and nothing has gone wrong. So guys, welcome to our bedroom. There's pretty Shanti Mae. Um, this was a challenge back here at first because I really, at first we were going to have our, my office desk up front, but it just didn't work out. It would have made it too tight. And, uh, and, and I, there's wheel wells back here, which made it really difficult to figure out how we're going to build everything. And then Curtis from Olap RV, like I said, we built a lot of our bus there in Biloxi, Mississippi on their property, gave me the idea to build a platform right here. Um, that elevated the space because we got plenty of height now in the ceiling. So that wasn't really a, an issue. So we raised this up nine inches to make this platform right here so we can have a desk, closet, and it's just like another walking space. And then right here underneath it is a really good size storage area. So we have a lot of storage right here underneath this platform as well. So back here in our bedroom space, we have a little washer spinner. This thing works really good. It uses more water than what I would hope it used. It uses about 12 gallons per wash, but it does wash very well and it spins them super hard. Then we just hang dry our clothes. 
whether outside or on a clothesline, and then we'll use our mini splits on dry mode. So it's like a dehumidifying mode and that dries them out really quick. And we have my office desk here. It's really both of our office desks, but I use this one most. Erica likes to work out in the front. I like to work back here. I, I prefer to not have any windows in front of me when I work, so my focus is right on my screen when I'm doing all my video editing. And I built these upper cabinets and I never built cabinet doors before. And so this was a fun project to do and they function really well. I just have a bunch of video equipment up here. Now we have our amazing closet. This thing is, it's a big closet. So the thing, I think the common misconception is, is that like, if you have a big vehicle, you can fit so much more in here, but it, that's true, but it's also not true. It's like, it's not like we have multiple bathrooms or multiple couches or bedrooms and stuff like that. It's just that everything is bigger. So this big door opens up so Erica can have her dresses hanging very nicely and a nice mirror so we can both kind of make sure we look good. And we have these really nice pull out drawers. I'm gonna pull out Erica's cause it's a lot nicer than mine, but they're really nice and deep. And that's all the clothes we need and all Shanti's clothes is in her bed. We have ample storage space for clothes. So here is one of two of our deluxe max air fans. We got one back here, one on the front over the kitchen. And I really did not want to spend the amount of money that we spent on these fans. It's like 375 bucks a piece. They are super great fans. But the thing is, is that because of the roof raise, Erica, she can turn this one on by hand, but the front one, she can't actually reach it. So we had to spend like the extra hundred bucks or whatever it is to have the remote to operate it because Erica can't actually reach the front one to turn it on. Funny fact. So back here we have our king size bed and this thing is a luxury. In our last bus we had a full size bed to try to maximize our bedroom space. So once again, it's not like we have more in here, we just everything is bigger and it's just really nice. And a uh, super comfortable bed. We have these nice storage compartments here on the sides. You know, that's like my fishing gear and kind of random stuff like that. This is Erica's side over here. We do have sides, we don't mix sides. I don't know why people do that or how, but we have our own sides. And uh, windows all back here, they're all covered up right now for lighting purposes. And we have our second mini split right back here, which if somebody's building a schoolie and they don't know this, you might think that square footage, one mini split would be enough. Technically it says, you know, 300 square, 350 square feet. Yeah, one 12,000 BTU unit would do it, but they don't reach the front or the back. You know, it doesn't, if it's in the back, it won't really reach the front. If it's in the front, it won't really reach the back. And that's just because of how long it is. You got the walls coming in. So we spent the extra money on getting two units and it actually has more efficiency now because if we just want to cool the back bedroom, we can close it off and cool it down. It cools down super quickly. And now underneath the bed, we have 200 gallons of water storage. I mean, that is, um, it's, it's really nice to have that much water. We learned this in our last bus, we had 55 gallons of water. Having limited water was the only thing that made us go back into civilization before in our last bus. So we went all the way in and got 200 gallons of fresh water storage, which is super amazing. It's not that we waste water now because we have so much, we still conserve it, but we can go a month without needing to fill up water, which is a really big advantage. And we have a smart TV back here. And we also did another piece of live edge along the back and just really pretty cedar planks on the back wall too. Just to give us a really nice, cozy, natural look. And Erica did a fantastic job on picking out the colors for the walls, just very calming. And uh, yeah, we, we really like it back here. We can spend a lot of time comfortably back here in the bedroom. The main reason why we did a schoolie rather than an RV or something like that is because of the cost differential and the quality of the build. Although it did take us six months to get the bus to this point, when someone could just go in a, go to an RV lot and just buy an RV, you know, this is like, for an RV with the equivalent, like kind of setup that we have, we're literally like a quarter of the price of like a normal class A RV and way more functional. 
I mean, there's no RV that I know of that has a fully functioning off-grid capable system without using a generator. We don't even have a generator because we don't need one. Although there has been a few times where we could have used <laughs> It'd be one. It'd nice to have one, but we don't. It's, it's not yeah. a necessity. I yeah, guess. we don't need yeah. one. And that's super nice. Uh, you know, it's over time the solar system pays for itself. But, you know, having too many splits, they're so quiet compared to a roof-mounted AC unit. They're super loud. These, you can barely even tell that they're on noise-wise. Um, and so it's just the cost difference of building a school bus could be so much nicer than buying an RV, but it also takes a lot more time. You know, six months, five days on average a week, 10 hour days is what it took to make this bus what it is now. And uh, it's a time <laughs> commitment, it's a time commitment, but it's it's totally worth it. I mean, we love this space. It's exactly how we wanted it. It's exactly our style. There's no ugly cream couch. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and there's some hiccups here and there. I mean, we built it ourselves, so there's still things that need to get worked on or, oh, this happened, needs to get fixed. But that happens in RVs, too, probably even more, actually. And I think it's easier to deal with when it's your own error. Like, if you buy, you spend good money on an RV, and then something goes wrong, you're like, ah, yeah, I paid good money for this. You know, and us, we're like, well, it was homemade, so... <laughs> yeah, this is a DIY build. Yeah. Or another thing as well is that on our first bus, I had no experience on anything. I didn't know how to do, make a solar system. I didn't know how to build really anything. I had a little bit of experience. Um, but I just, through YouTube and meeting people who would teach me things and help me with things and Erica with her design ideas, it just, the skills developed as I did it. You know, there's, our last video, we said this amazing quote, it always seems impossible until it's done. And uh, that's literally how both the buses felt, mm -hmm. except this one I had a lot more confidence going into. So guys, welcome to the outside of our schoolie build. We did a roof raise on this bus, which was a big task, but it really wasn't as hard to work, but it was totally, totally worth it. If anybody's thinking about doing it, I strongly suggest doing it. Another live edge piece here that I'm held up with bungee cords right now. I'm still working on the final design. The color scheme we went with was pretty much the same as our last bus because we just love the colors it blends in with the environment too so we're not like a big eyesore somewhere um, very calm neutral beachy you know however you want to say it and uh, this is all the sheet metal that we added we went with rv windows took out all of the bus windows for insulation purposes and they're just so much nicer they're tinted cost a little bit more but really nice now right here is the first toolbox that we have added. We're gonna add more because all of this space underneath here is completely empty. Open these bad boys up and then boom. All of my tools are underneath here, pretty much most of them. I even have my welder in here, water hose, all of my DeWalt tools on these really awesome hanging things. They're like, they mimic a battery. And so you can mount them anywhere. It's super convenient. This was Erica's idea to get this awesome, our logo printed out on a huge vinyl sticker for the side of the bus. And it, it actually looks really amazing up here. Working our way towards the back of the bus. This was the original part of the bus right here. And right here is where we cut it off and raised it. You can actually see this sheet of metal is where we raised it. It's we're crazy dirty right now because we're just going down a bunch of dirt roads. But we added this window right here rear view camera and our, this is our tow hitch or tow bar and actually inside of here this is worth showing you if anybody is wanting to convert a school bus talking motors and transmissions is really scary we went with this one which is pretty tested solid and true it is a cummins 8.3 liter diesel motor has plenty of power with a m60 or M3060 or M6030, one of those, transmission, and it's a really great transmission combo. This bus came with AC inside of it, stock, and there was a massive compressor right here with a whole other alternator and everything that ran it. So we took that out, and this is actually one of our mini splits exterior units that I just installed right in here. I had to fabricate a little bracket for it real quick, but it works out good. It looks a little messy because we have all these extra copper lines, but... This is our exterior unit for our back AC. 
and it's it fits perfectly in there, has tons of space to vent. And this is our super dirty Jeep Grand Cherokee. <laughs> it's super, super dirty. One thing I did not think about is that the exhaust pipe on all buses, they come right out the back like that. So this side of the car gets just covered in black soot when we drive. It's like, it cleans, but look, whoop, it's nasty. It just gets covered in black soot. So, but yeah, it's, it's a good car. It tows well. This is worth mentioning for people who are doing a schoolie build. Very quickly, this is our water fill station. This is our city pressure right here. So when we're at an RV park or something, we can just put a hose right in there and it pressurizes the lines. But over on this side, typically this is your gravity fill. So you just stick a hose in there and it uses the gravity pressure to fill your tanks. And then this would normally be your city pressure. But what I did, because our tanks are so large and we learned from our last bus that filling up through gravity feed, the water's always sloshing out, it takes a long time. So our city pressure on this side is going directly into our tanks. So it's full pressure going into the tanks. And then the gravity line is our vent, which you need a vent when you're filling your tanks so the air pressure doesn't explode your tanks, essentially. Here's that exterior door that goes into our shower, super convenient. More windows. And then these two little toolboxes right here are small organizers. So I have tons of my smaller tools that don't, that would make the other toolbox very messy. I wanted to keep a lot of the tools that I have that I use to build this bus, which I still have all of them with me. Because when we're on the road, there's all the times where people are working on a project for their build, or if I got tools, I can get hired to do a job if I need to. You know, so I really wanted to keep all the tools that we could. And so you can, on the top of the bus here, you can see the transition of the roof raise. That was the original height on front, and then you can see where it raises up. We raised it 15 inches. So it's a pretty decent sized roof raise, but not too big. We didn't want to go massive. Just enough, you know, it was perfect. And we have all of our solar panels up top. We have six 435 watt panels, giving us a total of 2,800 watts of solar. And it, it, they're super powerful. They really do well. And I mounted them with Unistruts with a clamping system. Once again, next Tuesday, so one week from today, I'm gonna to be posting a full video on our whole entire solar system, even how I mount them. And just stay tuned for that, subscribe to the channel and you'll see that next week. And guys, Erica needs ideas. I didn't wanna remove the stop sign. We painted over it, but and it still functions, but we wanna do some really cool like art piece on this. So if you have any ideas of what we could put here, put in the comments as well. It's been one of those things like we don't know what to do, so. Give us some suggestions. We would definitely appreciate it. We want to thank you so much for watching this video, taking time of your day to check out our home, sweet home, and yeah. you'll have to come back and see more. Yeah, and guys, really like and subscribe to our channel. Like this video. I always say it wrong, but you get the points. <laughs> so like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and this video, and we will see you guys on Thursday.